Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this breakup video here, I'll be showing you how to flush the heater core on your vehicle. It's important to take the opportunity to flush your vehicle's heater core when you have drained a substantial amount of fluid from the cooling system. In this case, I'm doing a cooling system overhaul on my 2006 Dodge Ram 1500, equipped with a 5.7 liter V8. Procedures may vary slightly between vehicles due to their location of the hoses. Flushing out the heater core will remove any sediment or sludge which may be trapped inside. The heater core is basically a small radiator located inside your vehicle's HVAC system where air blows past it to provide heat for the cabin. A plugged heater core can cause a lack of heat in your vehicle's cabin. With many of the components removed here on the truck, it's easier to see where the heater core lines are routed. As you can see I have removed the water pump and to the left the two small rubber hoses are for the heater core. Heater core lines will go through the firewall, routed in behind the dashboard directly to the heater core. Both of these lines should be disconnected. Next I have a clear bucket so you're able to see the flushing process better. Using a hose, set it to a lower pressure. This water will be pumped through the heater core in both directions to ensure everything has been flushed out. The water should not exceed 20 psi, otherwise the system can become damaged. If your system is equipped with dual climate control, these systems are typically controlled electronically with valves. Ensure your ignition is off so there's no power going to this valve where you can push dirt or debris inside of it. This can cause damage. If you are required to do this while the engine is still together, then I would recommend purchasing the appropriate size clear lines to connect directly to the firewall. You'll see the connection point at the firewall in a moment. As you can see, I am alternating between the inlet and outlet hoses to ensure everything is flushed out from the heater core. The first time around, you can see there is still quite a bit of coolant left in there. As I progress more, the water becomes clearer and cleaner. Once the water that comes out from the heater core is fully clean, you are officially done. For working on vehicles yourself, either at home or in the field, eManual has dealer grade repair manuals available for any vehicle you are working on. Detailed illustrations and information making sure you don't miss any important points and are ready to tackle any job. Emanuel has hooked me up with a 20% discount code for site wide. It's 4DIYERS20. Make sure you use my referral link in the video description. This will allow me to make a percentage for each sale to help keep my channel going. Depending on the age of your cooling system and the last time it was maintained, I would highly recommend replacing those hoses as preventative maintenance. This will ensure your cooling system is reliable. For this I did purchase new rubber hoses. I was required to use a razor knife to cut them off the connections to the firewall as they were stuck in place and I was unable to get a firm grip on them using pliers. The new lines are then installed. To replace the factory spring clamps I used gear clamps instead as they are a much more reliable option. Now for replenishing the coolant system, here I'm using my OEM tools model number 87043 no spill coolant funnel kit. Included is 5 spring loaded adapters for various vehicles, various attachments to work in those awkward areas, built in stopper to prevent drips when removed, and an air release vent for filling and bleeding air from the system. A must have for professionals in the field or those working at home. A link to this will be included in the video description from Mobile Distributor Supply. The system will require about a 50 50 mixture of coolant and distilled water. This can be adjusted slightly depending on your climate, as this will affect the boiling and freezing points of your coolant. Only use distilled water in your cooling system as there is no additives or minerals which may cause problems in your cooling system down the road. As you can see when there is fluid in the funnel, air will slowly escape in your system. You can squeeze the upper and lower rad hoses to help push out any air from the system, filling the system until the level no longer drops in the funnel. Once the level stays the same, make sure the vehicle is on level ground, turn your fan on and the heater to the hottest settings. Then start the engine and watch the level. Monitor the level of coolant. If it drops, add more. Only keep a couple inches of coolant inside the funnel and wait until the engine comes up to full operating temperature. Watch the gates constantly so the engine doesn't overheat. Once the level no longer drops, turn the engine off and let it sit until it cools down. When that fluid is hot, it'll expand. Once it cools down, it'll contract and you'll have to add coolant. I warmed the engine up again and repeated the process just to be safe. Then let it cool down again. The valve in the center of the funnel is closed when there's still coolant inside. It's removed from the radiator and this is dumped into the reservoir tank. 
The reservoir tank should be between the minimum and maximum lines, so add more if necessary. Go back and tightening those gear clamps may be required when the engine cools down. Then check for any leaks. If none are found, you're officially done. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me. Leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.